Yeah, hi everyone. This is a uh, another video made up from very old footage from way back when I first got the bike. Uh, one of the first things I said about fixing up was the dashboard. Um, these photos here are, are of the current dash, but it started off much worse. Uh, so in this video, I'm going to just show photos and videos from way back when I first set it up. Now, when I bought the bike, it looked approximately like this. In fact, this was the photo that I received. This is how I purchased the bike. You can see the instruments on the right. They're very foggy. So is the one on the left. Uh, it's pretty rough. This is when I had it in the house. I took some photos. And it was, you can see there's no color on the needles. A lot of dust and dirt inside the instruments. There was, uh, oh, there's a taken with a flash so we could uh, see um, more of the condition of the glass. Uh, it was splitting, of course, as many of these do. Uh, I was just barely hanging on. Here's the bulbs. I pulled them out. Uh, there's a little glass bead that someone had put in the generated light, which is quite funny. It's actually still in there. Here's the electrics, you know, looking good. A lot of, uh, you know, patina, as they call it. And so our first job is I, I pulled this all to pieces. Uh, there's also the fuse box, which I did at the same time. Because what I did was I packaged it all up and I took it to a, an electroplater. And here we can see the rust, actually. Quite a lot of corrosion. Even though they looked quite tidy, you can see there's a lot of corrosion. I pulled all of these pieces out, springs and everything. And here's when I got it back. So I had some of it nickel plated. These parts were nickel plated. Circlips and all. I just this is really a bit of a test. I said just try it and the rest was cleaned He put it in some sort of bath to clean all the parts uh, So I said about putting it all back together uh, These are the cleaned parts Looking pretty good actually. There's the old that's how it did look and then afterwards It looked like this. This is what those items looked like That's actually on a no, that was the right dash. Yeah, so here again. This is how I had it. It was looking very very tidy um, now, this is a replacement dash that I purchased, one of these ones from Australia. I was reasonably happy with this dash uh, until I discovered it had this odd problem where the, the holes that the instruments sit in were quite badly offset. They were not centered on these um, platforms. They were offset. Here we can here I've marked the width of the flange on both sides. This is the original with an even flange all the way around, and then that's what the replacement looks like. And I think I even had a replacement one from the guy, but it was just the same, no difference at all. He didn't seem to think it was a problem, but it was. It was hard to mount the instruments. They were weirdly offset. Here again, I was demonstrating what the issue was. Eventually I found this on eBay exorbitant price, a complete original NOS dash, lights, ignition, keys, cabling, exactly the one for my bike. And this is what we're going to see in the video now. That's just arrived. So here we see an old, new old stock dash. And the holes are centered too, so with all fresh lights, never been apart unused ignition switch, all the wiring unused. Yep, there we go. This is exactly what the keys were like. CV keys. <laughs> yep. I mean, it's all firm feeling. It feels like a new bike. Wow. It really does. And so the finish here is sort of quite matte still. It's not glossy, not sort of a glossy matte like my original dash which looks different. So that's fantastic in any case. These are all perfect. None of them have been pulled apart. A few speckles from uh, airborne sort of corrosion, that sort of thing. How about that? Brand new dash, brand new keys, brand new lights. 35 years old, 33 years old. So this is my original dash off my uh, 1982 900SS. It's falling off, so this dash has uh, always been falling apart here and up here, up here. So the mounting brackets up here are not very well aligned with the um, plastic and so there's, there's a lot of 
crookedness, um, some splitting and so on, but that's old. That's been on a motorbike for, you know, over three decades. And uh, so it's had a lot of use. And uh, of interest though, I just want to look at this here because what I've purchased at a ridiculous price was a new old stock dash as it would have arrived from the factory as a spare part. Just like that, and just for record, the part number is 0797.38.408. It's quite interesting. I get to see what it, what it was actually put together like, because I've since um, done some restoration work on my dash, and so it's interesting to see an original. For example, I wanted to know, when I put mine together, I wanted to know if these bolts these bolts, the thread doesn't go all the way up, um, all the way into these, these bolts. The thread is only about two thirds of the way across the inner surface of the bolts. And I wanted to know which side um, got the thread and which side didn't. And it looks like the uh, thread is on this side. Now, I can't remember which I opted for, but yes, that's how I did it here. I did it here like that too. So this is, these are how my restored ones looked. Took them up to pieces, had them uh, plated, polished them up, got them all looking good. Um, got a new spring in one of them and uh, and put it all back together. But of course, without having an original for reference, I didn't know exactly what it would be like, how everything was aligned, but now I can see it was pretty much spot on, actually. Yes, did that exactly like that. Well, that's a coincidence. <laughs> so, it's nice to see something that is as it was from the factory. I would assume that was hasn't been put on there since. It certainly doesn't. Oh yes, it's an old one. In fact, that says something on it. Let me just uh, get a magnifier. We'll see what that says. I hate glasses. I've reached the age where my eyes are just going. It says T and B. T and B with an ampersand for the end. So T ampersand B, both capitals, and then in slightly smaller letters, but still all caps, T Y hyphen wrap, R A P. So that means tie wrap. T Y hyphen R A P. And then patent D. P A T dot D. So that's what it says on that uh, tie wrap. I don't know whether that's an old one or not. Who knows? So what else is of interest in here? I guess the only other thing is on the front. Because when I did mine, I wondered whether or not these um, lights, which have a slot across them, right? For putting a coin in or whatever to, uh, to remove them. So you can get to the little light bulbs, you can replace them through the front. So I wondered, whether those would have been lined up or whether they just would have been allowed to tighten down to wherever they were tight and then left like that. Well, funnily enough, now look, they're all perfectly lined up, straight down, top to bottom. Also of interest is how crummy the lettering is and the whitening is just terrible. <laughs> Overall, it's just terrible. But the finish here, um, it's quite a matte sort of finish, a satin matte finish. Uh, rather than the quite sort of shiny gloss of this. The remanufactured ones are actually very glossy plastic. But um, if you ask uh, where they're made, you can get them to do a satin, spray a satin finish on them, which I thought looked quite good when I saw one, but didn't look original. Well, now that I see an original, it's actually not that bad. It's not that bad at all. Of course, the remanufactured ones, they, there's, they do a tighter grain than this, which is the earlier finish, not this nice big rough grain, which I quite like, and of course is correct for my bike. So that's of interest, the fact that those are going all the way up. And then the keys, this is what the keys look like. Two original keys, because my, my one has remade keys. They're both different, but they don't look like this. These actually say CEV in them just like the lock is and the uh, lights and everything. So there's a CEV keys, two matching keys for that bike. Looking very nice and cheap and nasty like these things always were. And uh, 
course, the other nice thing about these original um, dashes is that this cutout here in the middle is in the middle. Uh, and the remanufactured ones, if you get one, just be aware that these are typically off center, quite a bit off center. And so when you look at your instruments in them, you may find that they're off center enough that it even overhangs the edge on one side and gives you a big bump on the other side. Whereas these are quite nicely centered, as, as are my original, my old dash as well, that's very nicely centered. I said just before, I was pointing out how these are all in alignment. I said that I'd tightened mine up, so they just ended up wherever they happened to tighten up. So I think in the factory what they've done is they've been careful about it and uh, positioned everything, put these together first, then tightened it up so that they would end up straight. So that's some little, little bit of attention to detail in there. Okay, it's interesting. So I'm going to do that with this. I've just given these one of these a tweak to see if it would come undone. And it's tight. It's very tight. So I'm going to have to be really careful about um, unscrewing these. I'll have to have a think about that. All right, I'm just, um, you can see all the bits here laid out. I've pulled it all to pieces, kept everything exactly as it was so that I know which parts went with which thing. Not for any particular reason other than the opportunity is there to uh, put it back together exactly as it was. So why not do it? And then I'm going to be cleaning these up because they're sort of quite corroded. There's little bits, you know, it's going to come off perfectly. I'm going to clean up the um, little bits of gel for the color. So if you're looking to uh, get one, uh, you could use photography gel. So you know exactly the size because it's the um, size of the hole. <laughs> However, let's just uh, check that. They fit very snug in the hole. 7.3, so maybe up to 7.5 millimeters, something like that. I'm going to check that on one of these. 7.2. So there you go, 7.18, 7.2. That's how big those are. Well, one thing of interest, these are all the old bulbs, all the original bulbs in there. Uh, just in case someone wants to know what they are. 12 volt, 2 watt Osram bulbs. And these are available. Um, so those are around. Now of interest here is that the red light, the gen light, and the gen light on the Ducati is not like a gen light on other bikes. Because it stays on, I wonder if this was done on purpose. The red light has two little filters. There's the one on top, and this is the one underneath. And it could have been a mistake at the factory, or it could have been on purpose just to dim that light a little bit because it's on all the damn time. I would say it's quite a coincidence that it happens to be the gen light that's like that. So there's a pretty good chance it was on purpose. It's funny they have a spare hole in there which isn't actually used on the bike, certainly not on the uh, 900. So just getting a... And I just wanted to put it around the, the teeth of this little um, washer. I mean this stuff converts it pooey, converts it to black anyway, which is convenient because that's the color of this washer. I'll have a little think about how I'm going to do this. I might try a bit of tin foil. If that works well, I'll do it. If not, I will revert to actual polish. Okie dokie. So what I'm doing is I'm using a bit of tin foil to uh, clean them up. I'm just rubbing it against the edges that I know are, against the bits that I know are quite corroded. And uh, what I did then was I just used a bit of the silver polish here, or silver chrome, whatever polish. To uh, finish it off, just to get into the edges of the slots to clean them out. But there we go, and that's that one. The rest of the parts are very nice. I don't want to polish them or do anything like that. I'll give the um, the spades here a very slight little um, brush with the uh, fiberglass brush, just a light one. 
today we're going to do an unboxing this is going to be we're having a look at the replacement dash the issue is that these holes here where you can see there's a lip that needs to be even all the way around makes it dead center here and the dash I had they were so far off center that the lip here was all the way at the edge and the other side was quite wide so here's the new dash um, is it better? <laughs> it's still pretty bad I can tell without even pulling it apart but you know I wasn't gonna argue so uh, Mm -hmm. um, straight off I can see the first one that he sent me these numbers were were milled out much much deeper here yeah, the numbering is much better the ones my last dash were so deep that it looks t silly but this actually looks good in that regard so that's a plus now in terms of these holes I can see they're already this one's quite far off yeah, that's no better at all. Um, oh, they're both terrible. And well, that's just hopeless. That's just hopeless. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that's the standard. That's the way it is. That would do. You know, a lot of people wouldn't care about that. I mean, it's a remanufactured dash. At least you get a new one. So for someone who needs one because their original is trashed, this, uh, this will do. They're not drilled. It's not drilled there or there this one and not in the middle either so here's the real thing which is drilled in three places which is one place too many um, and now we can compare the finish so the this is the coarse grained one which he does as well but he said that the fine grained which is of the earlier 900 SS's looks better looks more original than the coarse grained one and so as I say if you get one off him have him do this finish, which is a satin finish he puts on it, spray, urethane or something. Because if you get it just off the uh, press, it's quite glossy, which doesn't look very good. Um, so that actually looks quite good. And actually is very close to the original in terms of its, uh, you know, how reflective it is and so on. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll take the lights and the lock out of this one. And I'll mount them in that one. And I'll make it available for sale. Someone will want that because it's uh, it's still a good dash. And they cost a bomb too, so <laughs> who knows, it might be cheaper if you get it off me. Okay, so the next thing to look at is these uh, bezels. So these bezels here, these are the originals on the instruments, obviously. And the originals are beautifully made. You know, the, the chrome, the finish of the metal underneath, it's perfectly smooth, absolutely perfect. And then they're chromed, so they look perfect. Now the bezels I got back, the, re the replica ones, they looked okayish in the in the bag. You could I could see straight away that there was, you know, bad edges and so on in the bag. And once I pulled it apart, I could, it was so much worse. There were just file marks everywhere. It just looked so bad that I just, there was no way I could put them on the bike. Just no way. So I sent those back as well. And he said he's going to make some more. Because, you know, I still wanted them. I just wanted them to be made properly. With a, so I'm going to look at these. I wasn't expecting them to be any good. But uh, that looks greatly improved. Still plenty of marks and scuffs, but that's vastly improved. So, so those might actually be usable. You know, you'll be accused of being picky. And wanting perfection etc but of course what else would you want why would you want something crummy I mean the price doesn't even matter they don't have to be cheap or anything they just need to be nicely done obviously this front edge is really the most important edge and that might be okay now I can still see the marks in there but he's obviously cleaned it up cleaned up the mold a bit probably smoothed it down a little bit the edge is crummy, but that's not so important here. I mean, these will be crimped over from about that far. Yeah, it's this spinning on the edge. 
that may you know you don't get a flat surface around here it's quite it's sort of spun or something let's <laughs> this new one is so big it already fits over Ooh, it's pretty close might be a bit of room there uh, we'll see at least a third about a third of this flat surface will be rolled over when these are mounted so that gets rid of a lot of the um, ugliness leaving a third and leaving me this front face so I need to have these um, I want them cleaned out because they're dusty this front piece of glass has a lot of fogging in it and the paint is off is gone on the um, on the needle so I want to do that I just want to have these cleaned out and checked out any lubing that needs to be done or whatever and then have these new faces put on it so those might those are probably fine now I think he's made a great improvement at his end so we'll go with that okay what we're doing now is I'm putting this dash back together putting all these parts back in uh, what I did in what previously I don't know if I've posted the videos or not I pulled it all apart cleaned it all up um, I cleaned up these uh, washers here the rosette sort of washers lock washers and uh, de-rusted them I uh, cleaned up these tabs a little bit with my uh, fiberglass brush just gave them a little bit of a wipe I didn't do it with those just to stop it from looking overly bright same here I cleaned up the tabs where the actual spades are going to go on but I didn't clean up any of the other the rest of the brass around here um, because it's it's old but it's perfect you see what I did do with great difficulty was put all the put it all back together so that the um, the slots in the heads here would all align straight now that wasn't very simple that wasn't very easy um, in particular as you're tightening them up here on the back you think you have to put these on and then tighten it up well if you do that these actually go on further onto the threads here um, than they should they're sort of dished here and they go they go over these th these threads and if you tighten them up with these all the way all the way tightened down first and then tighten the back up it will dig into the plastic and lock this tight I think that's what they were like from the factory because I've, it was very difficult to get these off and I actually had to undo them all to get it off so uh, with a lot of careful back and forth and back and forth with these things in and just tweaking it up doing it all I basically got it back together as it was there's my reference so what I was going to do now I'm going to use a bit of this this is um protective lubricant for switches I'm going to put some on this here and uh, first I'm going to clean those contacts at the bottom yep that are at the bottom of these things is a spring-loaded contact at the end of these that's spring-loaded so I'm just cleaning that and then on the rear I want to do a couple of things I want to take a little bit of this I'm going to put it in the thread I'm going to put a little squirt into each thread like that serves as a little bit of a protectant then great just wipe off any excess so this is just a clean I'm not going far in I'm just going far enough to clean the edges not as far as the actual um, gel okay there we go same thing a bit of a wipe around the um, thread ah what else can I yak about these aren't meant to be entertaining these videos they're just for diehards you know people who want to see something going on I'm not teaching anything I'm not doing anything I'm just recording it for reference because uh, I don't think there's any other recording of um, a strip down and reassembly of a Ducati 900SS dash on YouTube. Not that I've noticed, anyhow. This is the neutral light. I 
Okay. I'll just tweak these out. They've all stopped just before TDC. So, there. There. That's the idea. Right, what next? So I was going to stick the uh, ignition barrel back in this. And as part of that, I wanted to put this thing in here as well. And as part of that, I was discussing not having this ring. So we'll just see what the whole, you know, the construction is. There's this little rubber collar here. Which really, once the key's in it, it serves as a bit of a weatherproof um, seal so that the bike can, you know, ride around in the rain and the water isn't just pouring down into the lock. It's quite good. And you take your key out, and that's why it's meant to have this, you close it. And so I'm going to put this back on. It's going to get this thing on it. And uh, this will go on. And I just want to see when this thing is tightened down, just snug. I don't want it to be squishing tightly against that. Just, just to there, how much space is left. So there, about, just finger tight. And I'm just looking down going, how much space? And it looks like there's about as much as the plastic. Hmm, that's really it. Not even that. So that's going to tighten down. It'll give me some tightening and this will just be sitting there. Either loose or just, just tweaked on. So that's good. That's what I want to do. Okay, now I also cleaned all this up. Um, just used a Windex type of cleaner on, on the plastic here. And, uh, you know, brushed around here, use Windex cleaner just on a rag here on the wires, just cleaning them all up one by one. I used um, white spirits on the barrel because that had a lot of sort of lube that had leached out of the housing and made it all brown looking. It's come up looking like new. So this is going to go like that. I'm just going to have a look at the back. Ah, I see. Hmm. Okay, that's why that ring is in there. It's in there because this edge, what the, this provides us that this ends of this actual shoulder is not flat. It's not, it doesn't provide a good shoulder. That provides a good flat shoulder. That's why it's there. Well, it's going to go in, in that case. That solves the drama of wondering where I was going to keep that <laughs> for the next owner. Okay. I'm trying to be careful because it's only got a little plastic tab top and bottom. And typically when you see an old dash, those tabs are gone. So that's like that. That's there. There isn't a heck of a lot of um, thread for this. Okay. It's such a crappy part, really. Imagine if BMW had done something like that. <laughs> wow. However, if you consider it's, it's, you know, a race bike and you're meant to throw the part away if you have a crash, and it's meant to be a cheap thing, not like what I paid for it, then it makes perfect sense. Okay, well there we go. That's going to sit like that. That's fine. I have no problem with that. So let's go back around here. Um, just revisiting this again for the nth time. I was just looking at a bevel rubber on the website and I noticed in his text about this, I was just checking to see if this was likely one of his or not, which it probably is, 
Um, he does them a CEV or blank. And uh, in his description, he says something about, you know, taking a note that when you put these on, you don't put them underneath, as you might think. Even though they're all cut and stamped out exactly like they would fit as a washer, like that you don't. And so that made some sense. And so I pulled it off again. And uh, the suggestion is that you would just pull it over like that. Now it does sort of sit okay. You know, it's doable. So, yeah, I'm going to do that. At least that lets me tighten this up properly. And uh, also means I can revisit putting this uh, washer in. Okay. So that went from there. More like one and a half turns. Well, that's the best fit. Yeah. That's the best fit in piece. Oh well. It makes good sense. It's the piece that was on there from the start. So let's go with that. I'm going to put that there. <laughs> I definitely took photos of it. I remember from all the different angles I was taking photos. And they would be right there. Oh well. Oh well, here's the one off the auction. <laughs> I'll use that. Okay, I'll just use that to make sure. I wasn't worried about getting it in the wrong place, but I just sort of wanted to have things approximately how they actually were. So that goes around there. This blue around those two. One thing I noticed about these is they're very tight, these spades. Very tight to pull off. Yeah, and to put back on. Which is great. That's what you want. Don't like the way that sits over there, I tell you. That's way over there. It really pulls. Mm. That's okay though, I can have them sitting a bit further up. Nothing wrong with that. Those are for the instruments, the instrument lights, so they go there and there. Okay, I think I will undo them, spin them 180 degrees, at least get the tabs back around. Uh, helps a little bit. See, I don't want to bend these tabs. They've already been bent once in the factory. I don't want to bend them again. Mm -hmm. That seems pretty much perfect. A lot easier now that I've done it enough times that I know exactly where to how to tweak it up. Park off run. Very good. And the instruments look like this. Let's see what they're going to look like. These are going away for a bit of work. But when they come back, they will be sitting there like that. I'm going to take a photo of that. And now this one I am worried about. These are my Speedo and Ta. So I sent them off to this guy I found who does these things. Okay, oh yeah, that's looking promising. Okay, good. I wrote a long, <laughs> well long, it would take you about a minute to read, uh, an email and printed it out and put it in here. And it had all the instructions just separated for each bit, you know, um, bezels, rubber, glass, 
needles, um, cleaning, you know, dust. And I just had a paragraph or a sentence for each thing that I wanted considered and also said to return bits in particular about the glass and the rubber I was concerned about because the replacement glass with the replacement bezel kits is not good glass. It's just um, two mil picture framing glass, that sort of thing as well. So I can see now he has returned the items and I said to return the items. My concern was the total lack of communication. It didn't respond to anything and after a few days I got an invoice which was surprisingly cheap which was nice um, but I don't need it to be cheap I just want it to be good so I was a bit worried that it just you know pulled them out seen the bezels thrown them on given it a blowout and then send it all back however I can see this instruction was followed and whether that's the old oh this is the old glass very interesting I can see the fogging on it great and this is the old bezel the uh, original bezel um, let's uh, go on through and look at the instruments. Now with the instruments, of course, all the speckle on the face of the instruments looked like um, dust. There's always a chance that it was actually paint, paint pinholes, pinpricks in the paint of the um, surface. It's possible. Of course, if it was dust, which is what it looks like on close inspection, these should come up beautifully. They'd come up like uh, and looking like new. So the other one, same thing, this is the old glass. Great. Okay. And the, uh, he used the uh, new, the old rubber. Fantastic. So I'm very pleased with that so far. Okay. Moment of truth. This is scary. This is scary. Because of course these won't be redone. This is it. If, if these are no good. Oh, nice. Always clean up the bodies. He's given the bodies a light spray. I was going to ask him about that because the bodies had sort of marks and shit on them. You know, they were just old. And uh, I was wondering about that. He's given them a light spray with a metal sort of paint. Well, I don't object to that. Well, he's done the, um, he's done more. So, wow. Oh, it's a big fingerprint there. I hope that's not inside. No, it's on the outside. I hope that's on the outside. I'll freak if it's on the inside. Please don't be on the inside. Uh. So that was on the outside. person packaging it did that. Well, that looks beautiful. That looks beautiful. The only fault I can see, which doesn't sort of surprise me, because these bezels were very thick. They had quite a thick, you know, very thick metal to them and I can see that the crimping here the rolling on didn't go perfectly well there so there's a bit of a an fold in that area in fact all the way around I can see the way it should have happened is that it should have been they shouldn't be as deep so they shouldn't have as much metal to fold around in fact that's going to cause a problem when I put the instruments in their holes in the uh, dash yikes okay that's a problem Hmm. Looks beautiful. The needle repainted. And pretty much as I asked, I sent him a photograph off the Medina site. And I sent it to him with a comment saying, there's a photo. And, you know, it doesn't matter whether the color balance is right or not on the photo. You could see the relative redness of the needle against the uh, red of the red zone. The relative. So you could tell that it was a brighter, slightly more orangey looking red than was there. And uh, that's exactly what he's done here. So I'm going to give him a uh, give him a testimonial and say very nice, nicely done. That he wouldn't have foreseen that. So I think the bezel is actually slightly off. Yeah, the only problem I can see on this is the bezel. Yeah, the bezel's possibly too thick, possibly too large. The holes. I guess um, the guy making them would want to err on the side of uh, making them a little bit larger than smaller. I think in my first video when I unboxed these I said well, as soon as I pulled it apart I went like that and I went oh it's too big I can tell it's too big well that's borne out here but that looks beautiful. None of those things are noticeable. That's fine that looks great. Okay. 
And the other one, again, it's got fingerprints all over it down there, which thankfully, we're just on the outside. Okay. And again, oh, beautiful. 47,000 Ks on there. And that looks like new. You can have a look here and see the, um, the rubber. How the, uh, how much more of the rubber around the edge you can see compared with that, where you can't see any. So that's the situation there. The other difference between the remanufactured bezels and the originals is the originals actually have a tiny bit of a lip here, where the the edge, the metal comes down towards the glass. The originals then go out flat very slightly, um, which you know mechanically sort of makes sense. You don't want to do that. So the stamping has a little bit of a rim, a little bit of an edge there. Other bezels on other instruments often have a quite a wide one, even a bit wider than that. So they have a wider surface pressing down on the glass and not just the sharp. So again, let's check the uh, crimping on this. And the same thing has happened. That, that rim is too wide and it comes up the side of the housing. On this one, it's gone on rounder. There's no particular spot where it's gone bad. He might have done this one second after realizing that it happened here. That's all right. That's all right. Uh, well, that looks beautiful. Very happy with that. I hope I was holding this in front of the um, in front of the lens here for the camera. Fantastic. They're going to look great on the bike. All right. Uh, good one. Catch you later. So this whole thing just looks absolutely spotless. The instruments look beautiful. Bezels look fine. And the, of course, the lights and the lock and everything else about this unit is absolutely as new. So I'm very happy with that. Put the key in. Yeah, it feels so solid and new. It's, it feels like new. I mean, it's not all floppy and shitty like an old bike. It feels good. So that's that. I'll put that together and um, have it waiting for the bike.